Nation. Sponsored by K-State Superstore and 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Tonight on K-Nation, it's an exclusive interview with K-State women's basketball coach Jeff Mitty that you won't see anywhere else. Plus, our own Lainey Gerber made the trip to Norman, and she'll break down that game with 24-7 sports insider Michael Swain. And in our Meet the Team segment this week, it's Kansas State women's golf. The Wildcats fall season is nearing an end, and we've got an inside look at some of their top athletes. Welcome into K Nation. I'm Glenn Kinley, alongside David George this week. <laughs> I'm still feeling the beat of the open <laughs> You music. like that music, don't I do. you? Welcome to K Nation. I am David George, filling in for Lainey Gerper, who spent the day bringing you Kansas City Chiefs coverage from Arrowhead. Yeah, and we're happy to have you here, David. We've got a great show for the folks at home tonight. No Wildcat football this weekend. They had a bye week. The Jayhawks did play though it was quite the high scoring battle down there in norman they end up on the wrong side of a 52 to 42 loss but there was plenty of scoring like i said let's show some of those highlights kansas went down to norman and laney was down there as well she had a busy weekend matter of fact ku and ou trading blows early this catch was impressive jason bean to lawrence arnold sandwich between two defenders he never lets go of the ball take a look at that slow-mo talk about some toughness to Take that hit and hold on to it. Still in the first, Bean carrying out the fake. So good it fooled the camera, but it's Devin Neal carrying the rock into the end zone to tie things up at 14. Bean goes back to the air here. This time to tight end Mason Fairchild in the back of the end zone. The backup QB finishes with 265 yards, four touchdowns, but two interception. Here's what head coach Lance Leipold had to say about Bean's performance on Saturday. Up and down. You know, I think he'd say the same. There, there's some things and. Um, you know, I think he made some really good plays. I think he showed, showed you know, ability again to lead this football team. But uh, I think, you know, I think he'll be coming in here. He'll tell you there's some plays we wish he had back as well. So we, we go, back to, go back to work and, and try to get better. Now, we can't confirm that Bean felt the same way after the game. Kenny Logan Jr., he pulls in an interception against the Sooners. A bright spot for the Jayhawk defense, but it doesn't make up for the 52 points from Oklahoma's offense. And the Sooners rack up 701 total yards. They were all over the place, seven TDs, and Logan Jr. knows the defense must be much better. I wouldn't call it a regression. I just call it uh, that we just got to fine tune the little things and get back to the details and get back to the stuff that got us here. Uh, I don't think we took steps back. Uh, I just think we just got to clean up on uh, small mistakes. It's always next man up, and we just kept continuing to try to keep fighting for all four quarters. And the Jayhawks are in the thick of a tough Big 12 schedule. They're on the road next week at Baylor before a well deserved week off. Next Saturday's game is set for an 11 a.m. kickoff. It's Baylor's homecoming, and we'll give you the spread on that game later on in this show. Like I said, the Wildcats resting this week. Because of that, though, we had a little extra time. We got out there to cover some other big matches, both in Lawrence and Manhattan from the weekend. You bet. Volleyball. Well, it sets up things in order, and it would kill me to not ace these highlights. Oh, brother. You dig the pun, right? I, know, I love them. I, I'm digging it. I was down <laughs> low. All right. We start in Manhattan yesterday. K-State taking on TCU. Sydney Bolding, she hammers home a ball, and she gets it done both front and back with an ace right here. Cats look great early on with a two game to nothing lead, but it wasn't just bolding. In fact, Katie Fernhold, she pounds this one ferociously into the hardwood. They gather together, they tap, and then they're right back at it. Aaliyah Carter on defense. She gets a block, and it was a block party, taking me back to my younger days. <laughs> and Alina Baca, well, she sends it back, but the Red Raiders overcame the deficit, and they defeat K State in five sets. Wildcats move to 11 and 8 on the year. And they're at Oklahoma this Wednesday. Always a tough one after you win the first two. Kansas volleyball played yesterday as well. Right here, that's what you need to keep your eye on. Number 17, Aya El Nadi. She got it done in all facets of the game, recording the service ace there. And it wouldn't be her last. They set her up to get a kill here. Let me tell you, the crowd went wild for that one. It was a good crowd. It wasn't just El Nadi, though. She has some great teammates, too. Rachel Langs gets a kill here. She had seven of them, six blocks to go with it. They set up Lendon Davis for this one. It was a tough fight for the Jayhawks. They took a two to one set lead, but the Red Raiders forced a fifth set. Langs and Davis team up for a block. In the end, it was El Nadi leading the way for the Jayhawks. How about 18 kills and seven? Yes, seven service aces for her yesterday. She was good. I like. I feel like my confidence was definitely like uh, better. Uh, yeah, like I think like getting like aces uh, feels like really good. And she's hitting the ground running. Uh, she's doing great things for us, and she comes to practice every day, wanting to get better. So she's a model teammate. 
The Jayhawks win that fifth set, move to 14 and 5 on the season, 4 and 3 in conference play, and with that win over Tech, and they also had a sweep against TCU early in the week, they travel to West Virginia for a matchup on Wednesday. The Jayhawks head to Morgan. All right, can't forget about soccer. K-State falls to Texas Tech, but beat Oklahoma earlier today, and that's a huge win mm -hmm. that could actually put the Wildcats into the Big 12 tournament. It's a big win for sure. Kansas soccer had the same outcomes. They beat Oklahoma, but fall to Texas Tech. That was earlier today. How about this? Sunflower showdown matchup this Thursday. Kansas at Kansas State. It's always fun when you get the crimson and, and red against the... the the purple. <laughs> you bet. Hey, pack it. Everybody show up. It should be fun. Well, speaking of fun, KU had a fun basketball season last year, and they may have had even more fun on Friday night for their mm -hmm. annual late night at the Fog. So check it out. KU basketball team, will they welcome fans to Allen Fieldhouse, not just to celebrate the coming season, but last year's championship as well. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> yeah, look at that in attendance, performing as DJ Diesel and Kansas basketball greats Mario Chalmers even hit a half-court shot to earn a student 10 grand. How about it? Perhaps the best part, though, is the unveiling of the new championship banner. Getting to see that that banner unveiled. I mean, national champs. That's a it's a big title there. So uh, it means a lot to me being a, whole, my, a fan of my whole life and now getting to be a, a part of the culture that is so special and unique to KU. It's like our biggest night of the year. So we really put a lot of effort into it, make sure that everything goes as smooth as possible because there's a lot that goes into it. Certainly a lot that goes into it. it looks like fun was had by all. I'm a little bit upset. I didn't. Get to see DJ Shaq or DJ Diesel as he calls. <laughs> Excuse me, Shaq. He had a white tank top on though. They gotta they gotta get him a KU jersey to wear. I think so. And I'm a bit upset too. I didn't get the half court shot. Yeah, Money. No, I mean, no where's kidding. the where's I'm the sure 10 grand? You and I each would have drained it had we been given the chance. <laughs> Maybe <right>? so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who's not who is making more than 10 grand right now. Uh, that would be a Kansas basketball alum. I'm talking about Andrew Wiggins, the 2014 number one NBA draft pick and former Jayhawk. He just earned himself a big time NBA contract extension with the Golden State Warriors. Four years, $109 Ooh. million. Dollars. He's making a lot of money, David, almost as much as we're making. How about that? Also in the area, <laughs> former K-State quarterback Skylar Thompson. Well, he got his first career start for the Dolphins today, but unfortunately, some bad luck. Thompson had to leave the game early in the second quarter with a thumb injury. We're happy that he got the start, though, and I did see that he honored some family who had dealt with cancer and passed away from cancer on his shoes, on his cleats for oh, that wow. game. So definitely a cool, cool moment for Skylar. And we're hoping yeah. that he's healthy. Maybe he can go next week. Yeah, I need a speedy comeback. All right. Well, hey, don't go anywhere, folks. More K-Nation on the way. After a quick break, we've got Michael Swain on the show. He's a Kansas beat writer, and we'll get his thoughts on what the Jayhawks need to do to snap that two-game losing streak. But first, we introduce you to a group worth knowing. Golf might be an individual sport, but these Wildcats say, well, they find ways to play as a team, and that goes a long way. The Meet Our Team story comes your way next. Are you a super fan? K-State Superstore has the largest assortment of licensed K-State apparel and souvenirs waiting for you. And with our Super Fan Rewards program, you'll enjoy even more. Fans can experience K-State Superstore at the stadium, online, 24-7 at kstatesuperstore.com, and our new flagship location at 520 McCall Road. K-State Superstore, official retail partner of K-State Athletics. Laura Kelly says she's middle of the road, but she's not middle of the road on the transgender agenda, and she's not middle of the road on crime. Kelly's Racial Equity Commission suggested criminals be allowed to sue cops, mandatory training to tell cops they're racist, and support for radicals who want to take police officers out of our schools. In the middle, like Joe Biden and her party in Washington, Laura Kelly's in the middle of the liberals. Hi, this is Voice of the Wildcats, Wyatt Thompson. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, 988 provides direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you will be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. For 24-7 non-judgmental support, just call, text, or chat 9888. You spend the day watching your kids' big game. At least one of you is having fun. And Chop House Aeoli is calling your name. You want crispy onion strings and a brioche bun. 
everything's better with melted cheese. Kevin's dad doesn't understand boundaries. The Sonic Chop House Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. When Sam Brownback was governor, it didn't go well. But Brownback wasn't alone at the wheel. Derek Schmidt was Brownback's biggest backer. And here's what they did to the Kansas economy. Job growth? Stalled. The state credit rating? Downgraded. The budget deficit? Ballooned. And Schmidt still stood by Brownback, saying he, quote, delivered time and again. Derek Schmidt is another Sam Brownback, and that's the wrong direction for Kansas. Welcome back to K-Nation, and each week we introduce you to a team in Lawrence or Manhattan that you may not know much about, and this week that team is Kansas State Women's Golf. Yeah, they say they're a tight-knit group, and that's more important than you might think, even for an individual sport like golf. Here's the story. We're all on a mission. We're all on a mission to have K-State Women's Golf be successful. Golf is an individual sport. We're kind of by ourselves. Obviously, when we're playing golf, we're not playing with each other. Yet these ladies say playing as a team is essential. It's super important to know that you have like the support and you have kind of a backbone so that when it doesn't go your way, you know that if you just keep trying, they're trusting you that it's going to get better. As good as it sounds, being a team, Coach says, isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's not about being friends. Uh, that's, a nice, that's a nice part of it, but it's about the, you know, supporting each other, celebrating each other's improvements, and, and also, you know, being accountable and, and having the ability to call each other up. It's certainly a mental game that any of you who swing the clubs yourself know can be frustrating, but these Wildcats know that bad shots or bad days can simply be a chance to learn. It's normal to miss shots, like even like really good players like on tour. We, I mean, of course the TV does not show the bad shots, but like they do miss shots. The results haven't always been there this fall, but don't be surprised if the scores look a lot different in the Cats spring season. It's just a matter of time before we, before we see it um, on the scoreboard. There's been glimpses, uh, but uh, it's, it's there. We're going to just keep trying to take steps forward. All right, more Jayhawk and Wildcat coverage is straight ahead. Yeah, K-State women's basketball, they're going to play their season without their All-American center. She's out with an injury, but that doesn't mean they can't compete at a high level. I bet they will, and they might win a ton of games. I sat down with Coach Mitty, that full interview, straight ahead. Jump the track to Iron Rail Brewing, the Midwest's best comfort foods and brews. Experience the taste of downtown, celebrating great food, great drinks, and memories that make history. The defund the police movement took its toll on law enforcement. We need a governor who has our back, and Laura Kelly fails the test. Kelly called Kansas cops racist and appointed a left-wing woke commission to undermine law enforcement. Sounds a lot like Biden and his anti-cop friends. We need Derek Schmidt. Derek backs the blue, and he's tough on crime. Derek Schmidt is a strong law and order leader who will keep your family safe. At Two Men and a Truck, we'll treat you and your belongings like we'd treat our own grandmas. Here we go! Hi, hello there. Welcome. Whether we're moving you across town or even across the country. Everyone deserves to feel connected. That's why Cox offers a range of high-speed internet plans that fit any budget. Get Cox Internet for $19.99 a month through the FCC's Affordable Connectivity Program. With no annual contract, download speeds up to 100 megabits per second and panoramic Wi-Fi and equipment included. It's fast and reliable internet for everyone. See if you qualify at cox.com slash ACP. Monday, let's do this. Today takes you behind the scenes of your favorite NFL teams. This week, we're with the Philadelphia Eagles to learn their secret for the perfect game day field. So fun. Get inside the game on today, Monday. Next live, Michael Buble plus Ralph Macchio. And coming October 31st, it's live's Multiverse Halloween. What? What? <laughs> Monday morning at 11 on 27 KSNT. Watch David George, weeknights on 27 News.
continues right now. Well, K-State women's basketball will be without All-American center Aoka Lee, and that's going to be after knee surgery, but it doesn't mean that the team won't be fun to watch. Yeah, plenty of playmakers still left on their squad for sure. I sat down with head coach Jeff Mitty to find out what we should expect from the Wildcats this season. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time. Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, and I guess we'll get to more of the good news after that. But Ioka Lee, one of the best college basketball players in the country, will miss the season after undergoing knee surgery. How do you and your team deal with news like that? Well, nobody likes the news, mm -hmm. but um, fortunately for her, the surgery has gone well. She's recovering well. Um, but from a basketball standpoint, I think the positive is we didn't have her this summer. We were hoping a, a midsummer procedure would hopefully uh, correct some things. It didn't. You know, injuries happen in athletics. They're an unfortunate part of uh, our sport, but um, teams adjust. Our group's done that. I think our group's played pretty well. Um, she's a big piece to miss, but um, I think we've got a good group. Yeah, and she did say she's going to come back next year, so one more year that she will play at K-State. What does that say about her and her character, but also probably about the culture and the program that you guys are building at Kansas State that she wants to come back and, and make sure she plays that final season here? Well, especially in today's environment, you know, mm -hmm. it's rare, but uh, I think she loves K-State. She loves her academics. She loves her teammates. Uh, she's had a great experience here. Uh, she's done obviously special things in every area. She's a great representative of Kansas State, so we're excited about that. Yeah, and still obviously a ton to be excited about with Kansas State women's basketball besides just Ioka Lee and her return next year. This year you guys had three freshmen and more young players that really shined last year. Tell me about the team that you do have that will be taking the court this year. Yeah, I think it will be a good combination of a group that got a lot of experience last year. You mentioned the three freshmen, uh, Sundell and the Glenn Twins, you know, played uh, roughly 30 minutes a game. They also had some experience this summer playing in two different three-on-three -three tournaments. Uh, one of the three-on-three -three tournaments was about 90% pro teams. And uh, I think they've really, really grown. Um, you've got a player like Emily Ebert, who's been a little banged up this summer, but she's a returning starter as well. And we've got some exciting new pieces that we've added. Um, we've got from the transfer portal, Gabby Gregory, who a couple years ago was an all Big 12 performer at Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Greer sat out. You've also got Sarah Shamatsi from LSU. And then you've got a freshman class that I think has got some good upside to them. And you've been coaching college basketball for a long time, heading into year number nine at K-State. What is it about this group that maybe makes this group unique or different from other teams that you've coached? Well, and boy, I think every year is unique. And every team takes on a, a personality. Every team hopefully finds their identity. And, and in our case, we're still kind of finding that. You know, that would be the probably the biggest change for this team is that um, we had an identity, we had a piece, mm -hmm. but this team has worked hard to forge their new identity. And uh, I've liked what I've seen in practice. I think they've had a good mentality. Um, ironically, offense is ahead of our defense right now, which is really unusual, and I would not have expected that. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of work to do at the defensive end. Offensively, um, they seem to have picked things up quicker than I expected. So every year brings its own challenges, but this particular team's journey um, has been a little different than I've seen in the past. Mm, correct me if I'm wrong, 599 career wins for you? Do you yeah. keep track of that at all? Or are you making sure you're going to get at least one this year then, right? Everybody will always tell you, boy, wish we'd have got that last year. Or Yeah, you, you always have the what ifs, but um, it's a number in coaching that it says longevity. It, it, all the things you say, good staff, good players, all the things. We've had a good eight years here at Kansas State. We we're going into our ninth. Um, uh, I've been pleased with our progress. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting that in the rear view mirror, though, so the earlier the better. Yeah, check that one out the box and then kind yeah, of get yeah, on with the, it from there. The earlier the better. Yeah, I love it. Now, i got toughest question of the day for you now. Between, if you had to pick a Glenn, me, Briley Glenn, and Jalen Glenn, tough choice. Who are you picking? Well, I'm going to pick two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be left out here. You are going to be left out. <laughs> oh, you are no. going to be left out. But uh, I'm going to pick those two. What we saw from them last year is rare. And I'll include Sundell in this part of it. But to see freshmen go the distance, go and not have too many hills and valleys, that's not easy to do as a freshman. I'm only minorly offended, but I figured <laughs> that you wouldn't. I knew you were smart enough not to pick just one of them because yeah, you're a mass. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's all I got for you, Coach. All Thanks right. so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. They, they're going to have a really good team. Not, I think they'll be pretty good this year, but then next year, Aoka Lee will come back, and those three sophomores that he just talked about will then be juniors. So you got to oh, yeah. watch out for them the following season.
Yeah, a lot of excitement with that. Yeah, sure. And also, back to some Jayhawk talk coming up. A two-game winning streak, Kansas could use a win. We also caught up with KU football beat writer Michael Swain after KU's loss to Oklahoma. Hear what he's got to say about how the Hawks can get that sixth win to become bowl eligible. Laura Kelly says she's middle of the road, but she's not middle of the road on the transgender agenda. And she's not middle of the road on crime. Kelly's Racial Equity Commission suggested criminals be allowed to sue cops, mandatory training to tell cops they're racist, and support for radicals who want to take police officers out of our schools. In the middle, like Joe Biden and her party in Washington, Laura Kelly's in the middle of the liberals. Did you know trading in your car at a dealer could cost you money? A recent study found consumers who trade in their car pay an average of $990 more. So don't trade in. Sell it to We Buy Any Car. Learn more and get your free online valuation now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. Find out how much your car's worth at WeBuyAnyCar. When Sam Brownback was governor, it didn't go well. But Brownback wasn't alone at the wheel. Derek Schmidt was Brownback's biggest backer. And here's what they did to the Kansas economy. Job growth? Stalled. The state credit rating? Downgraded. The budget deficit? Ballooned. And Schmidt still stood by Brownback, saying he, quote, delivered time and again. Derek Schmidt is another Sam Brownback. And that's the wrong direction for Kansas. Dream it. Create it. Drive it. Just like that. It's easy to custom order your 2023 Ford F-150 truck. Choose from available features like Pro Power on board, an interior work service, and a 12-inch touchscreen. Visit your local Ford dealer today and let us help you choose the F-150 that's right for you. Now lock in 3.9% financing for 60 months plus 500 bonus cash when you order your Ford F-150 today. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Road trip to Norman to see the Jayhawks take on Oklahoma yesterday. And afterwards, she caught up with Michael Swain of 24 7 Sports. Let's listen in. All right, Michael, KU gets its second loss in a row just despite putting up 42 points. How do you think the Jayhawks need to bounce back from this game? Uh, defensive improvement is going to be the big key next week. And I think you look today, the trenches, I think, is where KU probably lost this game. Oklahoma's offensive line, really good. And it forced KU's guys to tackle in space a lot a lot of missed tackles as a result. And I think you look at the defensive line for KU, not able to do much. And now all of a sudden you look next week and it's a Baylor team that arguably its biggest strength is its defensive line and its offensive line. So I think we're looking for where the bounce back needs to happen. I think it's in the trenches because I think for KU this year, it's been a lot better than in years past, but uh, big challenges are set to come pretty soon. Yeah, the lines for sure, but also the secondary has kind of been able to be the shining star because of that. How do you see the secondary improving or maybe not having to improve, mm -hmm. but being able to do less work with the line doing its job? Yeah, I think you na nailed it, right? If you're able to get past rush, the guys don't have to cover for as long. And I think the, the Kobe Bryant injury will loom because he's been pretty good for KU in terms of, you know, he comes up with the big plays when KU needs it. And it's a bummer to see him go down. Defense is so intertwined. If the defensive line plays better, the secondary has a better chance of playing better. And if the secondary is not playing well, then the defensive line doesn't have a chance to get home because the quarterback's getting the ball. The secondary has a lot to improve, too. Yeah, and with the defensive line being outsized like it was with the OU O-line, just how do you expect a good job of that. There is a, a size and a talent gap still going on and I think coaches would tell you that. So how do you combat that? You keep your guys fresh, you keep new groups running in and against a team like Oklahoma that goes so fast and so up tempo it puts KU on its heels and it makes it where that talent gap can kind of show because guys are out there for so long before they can even get a rest. So I think it's going to come down to can KU start to rotate a little bit more and, and get some more fresh guys in. OU was playing really fast today, so it was difficult for them to make those adjustments and get those fresh guys in. But one guy that was able to come in and be fresh is Mason Fairchild. He's been pretty good the past couple of weeks. What do you see when him and Jason Bean are connecting on the field? Yeah, he's, play, he's played pretty well. And I think you look at Fairchild, and I, I think that he's kind of the all-around tight end KU has. Fairchild's worked really hard. He improved a lot on the 
run blocking, and now I think you're starting to see some of that come in too with being able to go out and catch passes because he's always been able to do that, and he's been playing since he was a true freshman, and he clearly has a good connection with being too. I think that's now, what, two straight weeks with, with mm -hmm. big games. Through the air, but also on the ground. KU's run hasn't been able to get going as much the past two weeks as in previous games. What are you looking forward to seeing from them in the next couple games? Yeah, I think it's all about first and second down. You know, offense for KU has been so predicated on, and first and second down, can you get ahead of the chains and make it third and short? And today they averaged, I think, seven yards to go on third down. It's really hard to overcome over the course of a game. So I think you're looking at, you know, guys like Devin Yeun need to continue to play well. I mean, 80 plus yards today, and I think about 12 carries. I think maybe you look for them to get a little bit more of a workload going forward. They went away from him a little bit in the middle of the game, which I thought was interesting. But he's the type of guy that I think is going to need to carry the rock a lot because I think you just look, Kai Thomas got a touchdown today, his first of the season. Um, he's starting to come on, and obviously you're not without, you're without Daniel Hyshaw. So that's a big, big loss for them as well. So I think Devin Neal is going to be one of the big keys going forward of, of carrying that rushing attack. Definitely. I don't think that's a hot take at no, all. Really. Um, so KU had a lot of home games before this. this. is one of their first away games in a while. So how do you think they're going to have to be able to be stronger on the road next week? Yeah, I think they did a good job of managing the crowd. I don't think anyone got really too caught up in it. I mean, they were used to this, right? They did the back-to-back -back road trips there early in the season, got two wins. So it's not something that they're not used to. Um, it's just now kind of getting back in the rhythm of, hey, got to go stay in a hotel for a night, got to get to the road game early, right? You're away from family. It's just a different dynamic. And they handled it well early in the season, and so we'll see how they handle it again next week. Yeah, the travel was a little difficult for me, so props <laughs> to them. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me on. We're certainly glad that Laney survived the road trip there and then had a, a fun day over at Arrowhead today. So don't go anywhere. We'll talk sports betting and wrap up tonight's show right after this quick timeout. Meaningful relationships built upon trust is a founding principle of the trust company. We help individuals and businesses create tailored financial plans and diversified investment strategies that adapt over time to your unique needs. Because we are independent, we can offer flexibility and creativity that many advisors and trust departments can't. If you aren't sure where to start or you're looking to make a fresh start, contact us today for a free consultation. At Long John Silver's, our legendary lobster bites are back with a delicious vengeance. Prepared with herby buttery goodness and fried to golden perfection, they're the perfect delicacy as part of your family feast. Order online at longjohnsilvers.com. Fish yeah! My family's been in Kansas for six generations. They taught me that family, faith, and country are everything. So I joined the Navy and served on board the USS Ronald Reagan to keep us safe at home. Now, I'm running for Congress because we need leaders who will actually put us first. And unlike Jake LaTurner, I'll invest more in policing, not less. I'll work with both parties to protect our families. It's what Kansas deserves. I'm Patrick Schmidt, and I approve this message. The school day doesn't stop for the flu. I stay ahead of the class and on top of my health by getting the influenza vaccine every fall. I want my daughter to have a healthy start. So I'm taking my doctor's advice and getting the whooping cough vaccine. The right immunizations during pregnancy can safeguard both of us. Your primary care provider is your trusted source for all your healthcare needs, including vaccines. Learn more at beimmunekansas.org. Join us for Haunted Topeka on Fox 43 KTMJ. Well, sports betting is now legal in Kansas. K-State didn't play this weekend, which means none of you out there lost money, but Vegas, uh, they didn't make any money either. So I guess that's all right. KU was a 9 or 10 point dog at Oklahoma, depending on where or when you placed your bet. So they either pushed or even covered that spread. And here's launch for this weekend. Yeah, Vegas has K-State as a five-point underdog in Fort Worth against undefeated TCU. And the odds makers have Kansas as a nine-point underdog in Waco against Baylor. And Kansas needs that one victory to really make you it a successful season. Eligible. I mean, I mean, when you're looking at it going in, to get six wins and go to a bowl is huge. Yeah, it would have exceeded expectations really quickly. You spent a lot of time in Waco. What, what can you tell us about the Bears for next weekend? I think they're going to have some injury issues. Uh, you know, quarterback got concussed, it looked like, with a targeting call. Uh, if he doesn't come back, Kansas has a great chance. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, K-Nation. I think there's obviously a lot of work, a lot to work on, but you know, you know, 
I think there's a lot to build off of, too. We're all on a mission to have K-State women's golf be successful. I think we're going to respond well, you know. Uh, obviously, we do have a pretty good stretch coming up, so I think we're ready for the challenge.